Okay, this is the 4.4 video for oxidation of metals and using the activity series for redox reactions. I filmed this video like five times, but it won't take the audio. Okay, maybe this time. Redox reactions, a little recap, is a reaction where electrons are transferred from one reactant to another. They are displacement reactions, so the ion here, B, is being replaced through the oxidation of an element, A. This video will have redox reactions where a metal is one of the reactants. For writing equations for redox reactions. So first, you need to find the molecular equation. And here you can tell that hydrogen bromide and aluminum bromide are both strong soluble electrolytes. And in order to get the complete ionic equation, you need to break them apart into their ions. And once you do that, you can tell that bromine is the exact same on the reactants and on, and on the product side. So those are the spectator ions, which you need to cross out in order to get the net ionic equation. Okay, here's a practice problem. Write the balanced molecular and net ionic equations for the reactions between magnesium and cobalt to sulfate. First, find the balanced molecular equation. They gave us the reactants, and from that you can find the products. And it's already balanced, so we don't have to do any work. Okay, that's the balanced molecular. And again, these two AQ solutions, they need to be broken apart to their ions, do that, and same, write the charges for those two reactants and products, and you get the complete ionic equation. From there, cross off the spectator ions, sulfate, and you get the net ionic equation. Use Leo the lion says Gur to find which elements were oxidized, in this case magnesium, which lost electrons and gained a positive two charge from here, to here, and which ones were reduced by gaining electrons. In this case, cobalt, it lost its negative two charge because it gained electrons. Okay, what is the activity series? Activity series, so it's a list of metals. Um, from bottom to top, it's increasing in ease of oxidation. So that means near the top of the list, you have active metals because they're easier to oxidize and more likely to react. So these are like alkali metals, alkaline earth metals, yeah. And near the bottom, you have noble metals because they're harder to oxidize and less likely to react. And noble metals, they're like, look, gold, platinum, silver, copper. Since they're not that reactive, People use them for jewelry and coins. And a key note is any metal on the list can be oxidized by the ions of elements below it. Remember that. Okay, practice one. Which of these metals is the easiest to oxidize? So as you can see on the side over here, the ease of oxidation increases as you go up the list. So we want the easiest. So that means we want the highest on the list possible. And gold is at the bottom, so that's out of the way. Iron is right here in the middle, but sodium is higher. So iron is out of the list. Aluminium is lower than sodium, so aluminium is out. But lithium, lithium is the highest of all. So that means it's the easiest to oxidize of all metals. So lithium is the answer. Okay, practice two. Which of the following metals will be oxidized by lead to nitrate? Zinc, copper, or iron? First, we have to find the ion, which is lead. Okay, now we're looking for a metal that is higher than lead. Zinc is higher, so it will be oxidized. But copper is not, so it will not be oxidized. Iron? It's higher, so it will be oxidized. So, final answer, zinc and iron will be oxidized, but copper will not. 
how to use the activity series for redox reactions. So first you want to find the element to be oxidized. It's like the lone element, you'll see. And then find the element to be reduced, which is the ion. If the element is higher on the list than the ion, a reaction will occur. But if it's not higher than the ion, no reaction will occur. Okay, so why does an element need to be higher than the ion for a reaction to occur? So we're going to use this example of magnesium plus copper chloride. Magnesium needs to have a stronger ability to lose electrons to oxidize than copper it's reacting with. If magnesium is higher in the series than copper, it can push its electrons to copper and copper will accept them and get reduced because, can I move this? The other lines is good. Gaining electrons, accepting them, will make you reduced. And one key note is for a redox reaction, if something is reduced, that means something is oxidized. You can't have either or. You need to have both to happen in a redox reaction. So that means if copper is reduced, that means magnesium is oxidized, which is what we want. But if magnesium is lower than copper, it doesn't lose its electrons as easily, so it won't be able to transfer them to copper and nothing will happen. Okay, um, here's a first example. Magnesium plus copper chloride. First step, find the element. And this time it's magnesium. Okay, next find the ion which is copper. Is magnesium active enough higher than copper? Yes! So that means a reaction will occur. And remember, when one substance is oxidized, another substance must be reduced. And in this case, magnesium was oxidized and copper was reduced. Okay, we're going to do the same exact steps but it's going to be metal with an aqueous salt solution. So first find the element. In this case, it's iron. Next, find the ion, which is nickel. Is iron higher than nickel? Yes! So a reaction will occur. And Leo the Lion says, Girl, find what was oxid oxidized and which one was reduced. Okay, same steps, but this time it's a metal and an acid. So here we have gold plus hydrochloric acid. Gold is the element. Gold is at the very bottom. And ion is hydrogen, so it's above gold. Since gold is below the ion hydrogen, no reaction will occur because gold is not active enough to replace hydrogen. Gold is not able to release its electrons enough for hydrogen to accept them. So nothing's going to happen. The end. I hope the audio saves.